What's going on everyone? This is Rodney with GearCore EDC with a video for you today. Um, a subscriber of mine, um, Lawrence, you know who you are. This video is aimed at a reply that you gave to me in question about some of my Tucson slip joints. You were looking for the 167 and the 123, which I do have and the 200 and the 221 which I do not have so um, forgive the noise in the background I have a couple different pets and rabbits and and stuff and they're making sounds so if you hear any odd noises in the background that's what that is um, but and a bird she might chive off at any time but uh, anyway um, Tucson slip joints are really nice, you know, Tucson knives in general, the way they're designed with all their different designers and, and, and stuff. The designs are really um, very nice looking and aesthetically pleasing. Um, so I wanted to do these reviews for him. I'm not sure if he is planning on purchasing some or wanted to see one. And of course, this is not just for, for Lawrence. This is for anybody who enjoys looking at Tucson's and knives in general. So I hope y'all enjoy this video. Thank you for watching. Um, and what we'll start out with is the uh, Tucson TS-123. And uh, well, actually, we'll start off with all three by doing a weight. We'll get the weights out of the way um, on all three knives so we can be done with that. All right, so on the one, two, three, I'm thinking it's 3.7 ounces, 105.5 grams, 3.72 ounces. And that's the TS-123 done in titanium and copper inlays. On the TS-167, Also, almost identical, 3.72 ounces. And 105.4 grams. So they are almost identical in weight, the 123 and the 167. Now you can see that there, the 167 is a little bit larger of a knife, but it's made differently, so it's the same weight. And then the 164 is a much smaller weighted knife. It's 82.3 grams and 2.9 ounces. So almost an entire ounce less. So that's pretty significant weight drop. So that's the weight on those three. We'll get this out of the way. Um, if I were to have to pick in order of liking these knives i would say first my list would probably be the 164 then the 167 then the 123 i've actually thought about selling the 123 um i know right now it's it's selling pretty well on ebay through china um so that i might even be more uh opted to do that but i haven't made that decision yet um, the milling that is done, we'll start off with the one, two, three, as far as showing some close ups and measurements and stuff. You can see all the fine milled lines on this knife, the surfacing that is done, the contouring of the scales and the inlay of the frame, the lock bar, the lanyard option, which is very nice, a milled titanium pocket clip that has a cutout that will allow anti-rotation of the clip which is very nice it is sort of thin behind the clip so it doesn't do well in thick jeans or pants um, this sort of is a gentleman's type carry it has a very strong pull of the three this one is the stiffest it does have a nice secondary half stop 
You can see the two sun there. Get some of that. You can see the Wong Dinzian. It says Wong Design, but it is spelt, I believe, D E E N X I N. Dinzian is how they pronounce it. But it's it's a design, so it's the Wong Design. Um, and I know a play on words, you know, it's, oh, it's a Wong Design. Funny. Um, it's sort of ironic, but that's the way it is. Um, and you can see, and I love Wong's knives as a whole. He's one of my favorite designers. Um, he, some of his, most of his knives are on the larger side, which is one of the reasons I like them. Um, you can see the M390 there. Um, just really beautiful, beautiful knife. Um, there is no skeletonization on this. It's solid slabs of titanium and the copper inlays. Um, I do notice a slight bit of lifting on one of the copper inlay pieces. I'm not sure the bolt might not be tight. I need to take a look at that. Um, but we're looking at a frame thickness of, I think, around a half of an inch. Yeah, a little less, 7 sixteenths of an inch. And an overall frame leak length is just a little shy of 4 inches. A little more than 15 sixteenths. And a blade length of approximately three inch, 150 thousandths, roughly. It depends on how I measure this. I can measure to the tip. Yeah. So right at three and five thirty seconds, or th um, blade length because of the sharpening choil. Um, we're looking at about three inches of cutting length. This does have a slight recurve to it. You can see here with a nice belly. It's a clip point style blade. Very nicely done. It's a larger blade for such a small knife. This is more of a traditional style folder. Um, I really, I do like it. And I'll probably end up keeping it. Um, but... Anyway, that is the Tucson 123, TS 123. And then we have the knife that weight wise is the same as the 123. And you can see that it's a larger knife than the 123. So. But the weight is the same because it has the speed holes machined, symmetrical on both sides, the cutout around the spring bar on both sides, the fuller or blood groove in the top of the blade that is very symmetrical. This knife is very um, pleasing to look at. The lines just flow really well on this knife. Um, this blade stock is 12C27. Um, oh, I did, the blade stock on this one, like I said, was M390. I didn't get a measurement for you on the 123. Forgive me. I'm not great at doing these videos. It's 78 thousandths of an inch, which is right at 2 millimeter. Um, the blade stock on the 167 is 148 thousandths. So... In metric, um, we're looking at not quite four millimeter. So it probably started out at four millimeter. Um, and this is a much easier to pull, and you can see the way the lock bar engages with the back of the tang of the blade. Um, this is a sort of a razor style knife. Um, it's uh, a full flat grind almost all the way to the top of the fuller groove. Um, it does have lightning on the interior of the scales, the frame that adds into the weight reduction. It also has the feature that I really like of a hidden screw pocket clip that is mounted from the inside. You really can't see it. Um, very nicely done half stop blade centering 
is right down the center. Very beautiful. There is some slight jimping on the back of the spring bar, um, but it's so light, it really serves no purpose except for aesthetics. Um, you can see the stop. There's a slight groove right there that engages for the closing of it. And then the secondary stop, you can see right here, it falls into there. That's the secondary stop. And then full stop or fully open. Um, it's just really, really nicely done. Nice contour. You can see the micro milling lines on the back of the frame there. Just the attention to detail and the machinery used to do this. Um, they have some incredible profiling ability at Tucson for the price. It's just can't be beat. I really like them. And again, you can see the great weight reduction done to the max inside of this titanium framed knife. And I keep forgetting things. You can see that the centering on the TS-123 is spot on also. I'm liking this knife more and more um, as I handle it and look at it and use it. Um, it's a very, very nice knife. The one drawback, which is not a deal breaker for me, <clears throat> because I don't always use them, but this does not have a lanyard option, um, which the 123 does. The 167 does not. Okay, and then last for today's review or show and tell is the TS-164. Now you can also see the micro milling done on this one where they're going from a very uh, fine graduation to more of a coarse gradient. I really like that feature of this knife, sort of like a horizon. Um, really nicely done and this knife is also symmetrical from right to left or front to back presentation side to non-show side. A very nice meal clip, works very well in and out of pocket if I can get that over the the white there so you can see it. And there's enough room there. This one works fairly well in and out of pocket, but again, it's not meant to be um, in thick jeans. Also, you have a spring bar, and this knife has the secondary half stop and the full stop, and this is a full flat grind. This is almost a spear point style blade done in a full flat grind. It has a nice forward finger twirl, which you almost have to grab on it. I have medium sized hands, and when I grab the knife with the finger twirl area there in the frame, my pinky doesn't have anywhere to go. So by the forward grip and choking up on the thumb ramp here, like you're gonna slice, um, it gives you a more user-friendly tool. Also, um, I, I remember things as I'm doing this video, so forgive me as I'll go back and forth. Um, I'm not used to doing full reviews like this, and I'll be in a learning curve. But I like the cutting action of this. You can see that, you know, as you're slicing, you have no flipper tab or anything back here to get into the way. You know, you can slice, slice, slice. In the same way with the 167, there's nothing to get in the way. You actually have a, a a cutting ability to get your hand back onto the frame as you do cut cutting. You know, these would be some good, almost like a food prep type, type knife. Um, but I want to say that, you know, this is, uh, this is my favorite. And it's the M390 Night Morning Design, the 167 is night morning design. He does some great work. Um, and this black wash titanium has some fade and some speckle to it. I don't know if it's coming out in the video, um, but it's sort of a radiant type uh, 
black to gray wash. You can see almost like the the process is coming off the black wash, but I received mine like this. So I'm guessing it's supposed to be like that instead of a solid black. Um, I sort of like it that way. Um, it's not a, if it's supposed to be black, I think I might like this one better. Um, it also has a lanyard option built into this that I really, really like. And that clip just flows with the lines of the knife. This is almost a good enough knife I've thought about with some of my two sons um, that have the lanyard option. Removing the clip and making a filler plate for where the frame is milled out to allow an anti-rotation feature for the pocket clips. Filling that, sort of like Artisan does on some of their knives, with a filler block so there's not a, a void there. <clears throat> and strictly carrying with a lanyard. And that way, you know, the knife just slides down into the pocket and your lanyard's hanging out and whenever you need it, you pull it out. And that, you don't have to worry about a pocket clip going in and out of your pants. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's just a thought process of something I've thought about doing. But I haven't done that yet. I do have some knives that I have removed the clips on, on two sons, um, that have that spring steel real sharp pocket clip that I don't like. I remove that and have some lanyards set up on a few of those. Um, but yeah, that's the Tucson TS-164. And I believe that's the uh, the favorite of the three. Um, and blade stock on this one is right at 132,000. And the frame width is just under a half of an inch. And there's the blade thickness. Get that so you can see it. I, I'm looking through the camera, not through the camera. Y'all might have missed some of the stuff I'm measuring. <laughs> Forgive me. I'm not paying good enough attention. Um, frame length. This is a small one. We're looking at not quite three and three quarter. And blade length. Right at three inches. And cutting length is quite a bit less because of that forward finger choil. Yeah, almost a quarter inch less. Or a little more than a quarter inch. But not much. Yeah, so um, Lawrence, I hope this has maybe helped you um, in your search or uh, quest for a Tucson slip joint. Um, forgive all the band-aids. I've had to cut my fingers at work and was playing with a knife today and cut this finger here. You know, um, knives are sharp, so you got to be careful. Um, and me being a machinist working with you know, raw material and steel and cutting and creating burrs and deburring stuff. And it's the nature of the business, um, to get cuts. And I got eat up by a piece of steel the other day. It's a long story. I won't go into that. Um, but I thank you so much for watching. Um, I'm trying to, going to start doing more detailed reviews like this. Um, and a, I did three at this time, which made it sort of confusing for me to try to make sure I, I would forget to measure a, a blade thickness or a width or whatever. Um, it's easier when you're doing one knife at a time, um, when you're doing detailed reviews. So I'll probably do that in the future. But I did want to show Lawrence and you guys and whoever's watching this, the three slip joints that I do own from Tucson. Um, and... I'd like to take this moment to uh, give a shout out to a bunch of different channels um, that I like watching. Um, I Forgive me, I'm sure I'll miss some, forget some, and I'll be doing some different little shout outs as videos go, um, as time goes on. Um, because everybody's at home now, or, or, or for the most part people are, because of this coronavirus this COVID-19 mess. I'm hoping to get this behind us. This weekend is the, is Easter weekend. I'm sure there's a lot of people 
wanting to get to church and, and do things and socialize. And this pandemic has put a, a hampering on that. So God be with all y'all. Um, but I want to shout out to Big Red EDC and Neves Knives and Hawaii Knife and Gear and JT's Knife Life and OCD for EDC and Blade Banker and uh, Hilltop Knife and Gear, Big Boar Knife and Gear, um, Karim Tozo. Um, there's just there's just so many channels out there. Jersey Knife Guy. Uh, mild mannered EDC, um, and and the list goes on and on. Um, I have a lot in my list. Um, triple EDC. Um, I watch a lot of knife channels and, and various stuff on YouTube and a lot of politics too and religion. Um, <clears throat> but I think we need at this time. You know, it would be good. You know, I would be honored if someone on their channel would shout out my name. Because Lord knows I'm probably the least popular of all those I mentioned. I don't have very many subscribers. And I'm thankful for the ones I do have. Very much so. Um, so with that being said. Um, I hope everyone is safe. And blessed. Um, and I want to take one quick moment to show something. Um, of my daughter's. That she has done some artwork. Um especially in her time off from school here as of recently. Um, she enjoys drawing and doing little anime stuff and playing around. And she has evolved and, and does some things and, and she's getting better. And uh, it's a definitely a, a passion for her. It's like sort of knives is for me. Drawing is a passion for her. And I've seen some of her drawings just totally blow me out of the water. And uh, I'm really proud of her. But here's a couple of ones that she she handed me um, last night. Um, and I wanted to show them to you. Um, this one is of a uh, thing she watches on YouTube. It's called The Soldier, The Poet, and The King. And if y'all have any kids or yourself are interested in stuff like this, y'all probably know who they are. Um, but I thought she did a good job on that. And um pretty neat I like it and she really likes it I wanted to show that and um, then this one here I can't remember the name of this character um, but she's sitting prone and you can see her nose and her eyelash and the way her brow comes down and the, the hair covering the most of her face and she's sitting sort of in the prone position and like a woofy tail and some wings and um it's different stuff but i like it she she really she really does some some neat little things and i wanted to show that and just sort of show off and and let her know that i'm proud of her and she asked if i could maybe show something on my channel and i told her i would um so all y'all please be safe um and remember um this weekend, this Easter, um, in my opinion, um, and everybody's free to their own opinion, and I'm not judging anybody, um, this is my thought process, um, that Easter is not about the Easter Bunny. It is the resurrection of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, where he died and rose again. And... I'm thankful for that. I can rest assured that me and my family and my loved ones who believe in him and call on his name will go to heaven. And some of y'all might not agree with that, and that's totally fine. Um, but I thank you for giving me support. I thank you for commenting. I thank you for subscribing. I thank you for liking. And I hope y'all have a great Friday, good Friday afternoon, um, and the rest of your weekend. Please stay safe. If you go anywhere, keep your distancing, and uh, I wish all y'all the best. God bless. This is Rodney with Garrett Corps EDC, and remember, stay sharp. Bye now.